So this is the MSL2, has a 188 uh, inch wing, weighed 61 pounds. I flew it under the LM, uh, the AMA LMA1 and I had a Hacker A150, flew many of the flights, 90% uh, of the flights on a Castle 160 speed controller. I was flying at 10S at the time and decided to upgrade it to 12S and I put the Jetty uh, Spin 300 on it and had quite a few successful flights with that speed controller. The biggest thing, folks, I want to make really clear is I don't mind. I mean, I hate to say it. Everybody's freaked out thinking that I was really upset the plane crashed. I was more thankful nobody got hurt. This potentially could have been an absolute disaster. And I'll get into that a little bit more uh, in this video. But, folks, I got to tell you, planes can be rebuilt. You know, um, the fact I could have hurt somebody and I'm going to get into this a little bit deeper later on, was just absolutely terrifying. So the plane after the crash looked like this. The wings are basically gone. The fuselage is in really good condition. I mean, this plane just needs new wings, a new speed controller, a new engine, um, any new motor. And it would, it'll, it'll fly probably in 2025. Uh, it is a big airplane, folks. People don't realize how big this airplane is and just how... Awesome. I mean, it flew like a big cub, folks. It was just an incredible airplane. Okay, folks, now let's get into what brought down my airplane. So this is my basic layout here, okay? It's a 12S2P uh, system for the motor and speed controller. I use Futaba S-Bus with both S-Bus servos and digital servos. I use the SBD ones to convert the S-Bus signal down to the standard digital uh, signal. I had two receiver batteries going through a switcher, basically, that would pick the best battery. Um, so basically, by the book, I thought I was 100% covered. <clears throat> Excuse me. I never imagined that I could have an ESC fire so bad that it would melt together the two wires that power the uh, uh, ESC that would then dead short the receiver. Okay, now there was no BEC on this uh, ESC, so I didn't need to remove like the red wire like you would when you're having uh, a BEC uh, ESC with separate radio batteries. If I would have remo removed that red wire, I don't think my plane would have crashed unless when the negative and the signal would have melted together that still could have taken out the signal in my receiver. But basically the, the ESC fire was so bad that it took out my receiver by dead shorting those wires together. Uh, back in the day, folks, we used to always have two receivers in our big airplanes, but everybody thought, well, as long as we got two batteries and some type of device to pick the best battery, we only needed one receiver. And on big electrics, in my humble opinion, I'm never going to do that again, okay? So when we look at the wires that burnt, uh, and I've got some video coming up, folks, that will show a little bit more that went on with the actual crash, but these are the wires that came out of the ESC um, that basically goes back to my receiver. You know, the receiver has to power the ESC. That's how your throttle works. Well, these are the wires that caught on fire and melted. And that's pretty messed up. Um, the best thing I could have done, folks, is have a receiver for the ESCs on the big airplanes and then a receiver for flying the aircraft. If I would have had a separate receiver just for the ESC and it would have burned up, I still would have landed this airplane and had no chance of getting near people or hurting anybody. Okay. Now, why did the ESC blow up? I had this weird phenomenon going on and it never happened to me. When I showed up to Ceph twice, I had the motor basically go into where it went out of timing and it made that screech noise. And I had to keep resetting the ESC to know, uh, basically it set it to auto timing so it could see that it was a 20 uh, pole motor. In hindsight, I should have grounded the airplane and took it home and figured out what was going on. But I didn't realize my ESC was slowly going bad. So I flew another four or five times, no problem. And then the next time it went out of sync again or out of timing. And then I reset the timing and it flew fine. And I'll talk a little bit more about the crash in a minute. But basically, uh, while I was flying, it went out of timing and it right there in the middle of this picture is where the ESC used to live. And you can see where it melted my fake cylinders a little bit, but the fire is really big. And you'll see in the video in a minute, the flames were really coming out of the top of the cowling. Uh, but essentially folks on big electrics, I'm never going to do it again without having a separate receiver just for the ESC in case the um, 
ESC takes out the receiver. Here's what the ESC and the ABS mount that it was mounted to looks like. And those two, those are two of the three, um, I'm sorry, those are the two leads that the batteries went into the ESC and it vaporized those wires, it melted them. So I have nobody, I have no idea how many amps this thing was just melting down at, but it was just incredible uh, what happened with the ESC. It just basically blew up. Now, I'm not knocking Jetty. I have had one person reach out and said their 300 spin did the same thing. So I don't know much about that. Now, one thing I do want to address, because that's what my hacker looked like. It's all melted inside there. Um, I had somebody ask me, was I really over amping this motor? And the uh, I'd always ran six to 7,000 watts through this motor for over 180, 190 flights. I knew I was going to put about 210 amps through it. And I flew it two or three times, landed it, and the motor was not that hot at all. I mean, it was hot, but it wasn't like melting down. So I want people to realize that it wasn't the motor that just melted up there. You could hear this whole motor and everything. When the props started to quit spinning, I could tell in the air that I had a problem. I knew that the ESC had gone out of timing, but it never happened in the air. If it happened, it happened when I ran it up on the ground. So now we're going to get into the video that crashed. My friend, Eamon Kelly, who's a drone pilot, uh, has always been following my uh, MSL when it flies, and I'll show some of that video at the end of this. But right here, this is going to be at normal speed, okay? Um, you can see the plane just hits the ground, and right here I thought it was done. I thought the landing gear would blow up and the plane would stop, but the landing gear is built so good that it survived that that flying into the ground. Now, I stopped the video here because some people were diving out of the way when it was hitting the tents, and I just don't want to show that on my video. So here I'm slow the video way down. Uh, my buddy Eamon said, you've got smoke. Um, and this is when I started to turn left. And I knew that, now I couldn't see the smoke that good from the flight line, but he's behind me. So I started turning left, and right about here is where I lose the radio. This plane always had a tendency to turn right just a little bit. I had trimmed it out with the ailerons. But when I lost my receiver, the flying surfaces went to neutral. And uh, they were balanced flying surfaces. So the plane started to do that little bit of a right turn. Now, folks, honestly, I had the nose way down at this point because I wanted to fly it down into the ground. Well, two, one is to keep airspeed. The other one was I would rather crash this airplane than to let it get near the pits. But my biggest nightmare ever and the most uncomfortable feeling I've ever had of to total helpness, helplessness is when the plane hit the ground there and it survived that hitting that hard. I thought the landing gear would collapse. It would be over. It might slide to a stop. But when it kept rolling here, it completely freaked me out. And I actually hit my brakes on my radio to full, just hoping that maybe the radio came back for a second. Okay, now look, I'm not going to roll this video. And actually, my buddy's coming in so fast with his drone, he doesn't actually get a good video of it hitting the tents because he has to pull up. He's coming in at like 50 mile an hour. But um, there is a couple of people that had to jump out of the way, and I don't want to show that. That makes it very uncomfortable for me. Now, this next piece of the video is actually from his drone. He had landed his drone, and this is everybody pulling it out from the tent because there's a fire under the cowling. <clears throat> and uh, excuse me, and you can see the smoke here. Now I'm running down the flight line. This is a hundred yards. There I am right there popping up. I got the hat on and you know, I know I had a fire under there and this is another thing. My fire extinguisher was back in my tent. I always have two fire extinguishers with me, but they were both in my tent. And uh, in a minute, you're going to see my but one of my best buddies, Burger. <laughs> he comes flying up on his little electric uh, motorcycle with a fire extinguisher. And this is another reason, folks, I think all of us should have fire extinguishers at our tents. But uh, you can see I had a pretty good flame coming out of the top of the cowling there. And believe it or not, virtually nothing was really that damaged except the ESC. Here's my buddy, Burger, bringing me my fire extinguisher. And then promptly put out the fire. And... Folks, I'd be lying if this didn't scare the living hell out of me. Um, I have flown model aircraft since the early 80s, or actually since about 79 is when I started flying gliders. And my biggest fear when I got into big airplanes was ever getting near the pits. And for this to happen to somebody who's a safety freak like 
I am has made me rethink the entire way that I build airplanes in the hobby. It really has. So here is basically what it looks like now. And, um, you know, the fire did most of the damage at the top of the cowling. And I'll show a picture of that in a minute. But overall, and the bungees on the f uh, right landing gear were all uh, just torn up because I have bungees like on a cub or something. And they were just almost destroyed. So the plane didn't really sit level because of the hard impact. It did damage the bottom jugs on my fake twin row radio. Um, but folks, I'm more happy that nobody got hurt. I mean, to me, um, here you're seeing a picture of what it looked like. Uh, the cowling will be easy to build a new cowling. I'm not afraid of that. Building the wings, you know, I, I designed them myself. I've got the drawings. I'll build new wings. Uh, there was a slight tear on the side of the fuselage. Uh, but essentially, folks, I just completely, completely lucked out. Now, one thing I do want to talk about is I did take out two tents. I destroyed two tents. And I did hit another guy's uh, 3D plane. And I damaged the cowling and uh, destroyed his rudder. Now, everybody that was impacted by this, I offered to replace the tents. And they said, no way. Uh, they were old tents. They're just going to throw them away before they go home. And I said, no, at least let me give you 100 bucks each. And they said, nope. The guy's plane I hit, I gave him all of my information and said, look, if I got to buy you a new fuselage or if I got to buy you a new plane, let me know. And he said, no problem. I'll get with you. I still haven't heard from him. So I'm hoping... He doesn't just, you know, forget me and um, because I really want to replace whatever I damage to his plane. Folks, anytime I damage somebody else's property in this sport or, a, or this hobby, I want to be there to help them fix it. So, folks, I want to end this video with just some v footage of it flying. This was at Ceph this year. My friend Eamon Kelly is in the chase drone. The plane had fake exhaust that would flicker just like the real exhaust, you know, ports showing, you know, flames coming out of them. It was really easy to fly. It was the best airplane I've ever designed myself and flown uh, ever. And uh, it will fly again. It's just um, I'm going to need a new motor, a new ESC, uh, two new wings. Um, and I'm going to go through, probably uncover the fuselage, believe it or not, and recover the whole airplane because I, I do want to inspect the inside of the fuselage to make sure everything's good inside there after that kind of an impact. Um, you know, I've got to fix the landing gear. But, folks, that's it. So thanks for watching the video. Have a great day, and uh, please like and subscribe, and um, I'll see you next time. Rock on. Have an awesome day. Thanks, folks. Bye-bye.